is good everybody welcome back to another my damn toys video today we have my wwe royal rumble 2019 predictions it is that time of the year we always kick off the year right with my favorite pay-per-view of the year the royal rumble i love the championship opportunity qualification i love everything about the royal rumble i love the freaking stipulation around it i love the freaking countdown clock i love the surprise entrance and it's just the most exciting time of the year guys you got people coming back you got people you know making their debuts you got the road to wrestlemania and i'm freaking hyped as ever for this year's card it is an absolute stack card i think that there isn't a bad match on the card there's one match that i'm like eh could do without it but I'm not even freaking faulting it, guys. I'm going in with an open mind. I'm very excited for this card. And this card's absolutely stacked, guys. I mean, my boy Finn Balor's getting a Universal Championship match against Brock Lesnar. I remember this being, like, rumored last year's Royal Rumble. And we ended up getting a trash freaking awful triple threat match fast forward a year later and here we are with Brock Lesnar a freaking again guys I mean my lord but anyways this year literally has the potential to be the best show ever like we're kicking the year off right from top to bottom this card is ready to go guys but uh you guys know how my predictions videos work we're gonna run through the entire card I'm gonna let you know my predictions for each matchup let you know what I think about the feud itself what my predictions are for the matchup who I think is gonna win all that good jazz and then when we get to the rumbles I'm gonna mention surprise entrance predictions I'm going to mention who I think is going to win and who I would like to win. So with that being said, guys, let's go ahead and get into this card. So our first matchup, guys, is Rusev taking on Shinsuke Nakamura for the United States Championship. Of course, Rusev did capture the U.S. title from Shinsuke, and now we are having sort of a just lackluster run. You know, they really haven't done anything with him on SmackDown Live besides a few little segments here and there. Nothing too serious. You know, Rusev and the U.S. title has sort of been pushed to the back burner. Shinsuke Nakamura, even when he had the U.S. title, it wasn't a big focal point of SmackDown Live when he was champion as well. So it's sort of like the U.S. title is sort of forgotten about, even though these guys have had a couple of good matches with the United States Championship. I'm expecting some decent things out of this matchup. I love Rusev. He's one of my favorites, and I like Shinsuke, so I think that this is going to have a good match. They've always had pretty good chemistry in the ring when they've gotten together, and I expect nothing less from this match, but Rusev's title reign just started, and uh, I think he needs to keep it here. I don't think Shinsuke is going to get the title back, so Rusev to retain the U.S. Championship. Next up, guys, we do have the match that I'm probably the least most looking forward to just because I don't really, I'm not really a fan of the Shane McMahon Miz matchup right here. I don't know what I think about it, but we have the bar going head to head with Shane McMahon and the Miz for the SmackDown Live Tag Team Championships. And honestly, I mean, I'm kind of relieved a little bit because I'm sick of seeing the bar, New Day, and Usos all around the SmackDown Live Tag Titles. Where's the club, man? Where's Sanity? Where's some good teams in here? I want some other teams to get some qualifications, not some forced together weird thing that the Miz and Shane McMahon. I don't know what this is. Um, I'm not a big fan of the storyline. I don't really like The Miz as a babyface. I thought that we were going to see a heel Shane McMahon, but I don't know where they're going with it, but I think they're going to win the SmackDown Live Tag Team Championships. That's just what I see here, and hopefully, I don't know, I just want the SmackDown Live Tag Division to be good. I want it to be competitive. I want to have good matchups and good tag team wrestling, so uh, I, I don't know how that would you know begin with Shane McMahon and The Miz, but I'm going to call it right here that Shane McMahon and The Miz will capture the SmackDown Live Tag Titles, and I don't know where they go with it, but that's what's going to happen. Next up, guys, we have the Fatal 4-Way match for the WWE Cruiserweight Championship between Buddy Murphy, Akira Tozawa, Hideo Itami, and Kalisto. We haven't gotten a Buddy Murphy figure yet, and I don't know where the hell my Hideo Itami went. But anyways, we got Kalisto and Akira right here, guys, and I don't think it really matters because I think Buddy Murphy will retain here. He's absolutely on fire. He's absolutely killing it, and I think that uh, there's no other way this thing can go than besides... Buddy Murphy retaining this championship, and I expect some high-flying, epic stuff in this. This could be match of the night. If you if you watch closely, guys, they're going to tear the house down, and I, I feel it. I feel like we're going to get a freaking epic, independent-style matchup here, and it's going to be some good stuff. But I'm picking Buddy Murphy to retain in an epic matchup. Next is the Raw Women's Championship match between Ronda Rousey and Sasha Banks. And I'm expecting some epic stuff from this matchup, guys. We know that Ronda Rousey is going to retain here. I'm going to go ahead and tell you I'm picking Ronda Rousey to win this matchup. I think that Sasha Banks, though, she has been wanting to prove herself for a long, long time. You know, her and Bayley have been pushed to the back of Monday Night Raw. They've been putting in six women tags and tag team matches all freaking 2018. You know, what a year that, you know, they had in 2016 and 17. And then in 2018, guys, they totally just ruined 
ruined Sasha Banks and Bayley. So I think this is going to be a year and an opportunity for Sasha Banks to prove her worth to Monday Night Raw. And she's going to go in there and sell her butt off. She's going to do some epic stuff. And we're going to get a great matchup between Ronda and Sasha Banks. I can't wait for this. I can't wait to see the attitude and the, the freaking fury and energy that Sasha brings to this matchup. And I remember when Ronda Rousey first came in, guys. You can go back to my Mania 34 predictions and all before when Ronda came in last year at the Royal Rumble. And I tore her apart, man. I did not want her in my wrestling. I didn't like when celebrities and everything came into my wrestling. I knew she was an athlete and everything, but I uh, I totally love Ronda Rousey now. I think she's one of my favorites on the roster. I think that she's terrific. She's grown so much. She knows she brings that intensity. She's not afraid to sell. She takes bumps, and she, she's a beast. And I can't wait to see what she does with Sasha. It's going to be some good stuff, and I cannot wait to see it. But we know that Ronda is going to win this matchup, and uh, we may have some future plans for her in this pay-per-view. We'll have to see. Next up, guys, we have SmackDown Live side of things with the women. We have my two favorite female wrestlers on the roster. My first is Becky Lynch. I've been on that bandwagon a long time ago, guys. Now everybody's wanting to join in on the Becky Lynch bandwagon. Man, I've been a fan forever, and now everybody wants to jump on. No, man, you get your own favorite wrestler. I'm just kidding, guys. But seriously, Asuka and Becky love them so much, and I, I expect some great things from them in this matchup. I'm kind of uh, confused here. I thought that Charlotte was going to get this matchup. I didn't know that Becky Lynch was going to get it. It actually surprised me when she became the number one contender because I thought that Becky Lynch was going to win the Rumble, man. I thought that's the way it was going to go, um, but we're going to get into that. I think that uh, there's some very interesting things that can take place in this matchup. For one, I think that Ronda Rousey needs to cost Becky Lynch this matchup to set up their WrestleMania match. It puts another wrinkle in the storyline. It adds to the storyline, adds some depth there. I think that either Charlotte or Ronda should cost Becky Lynch this matchup and uh, maybe even, you know, it, maybe not have her get pinned or tap out because you're going to make her look weak. I think that Becky needs to either, you know, get counted out. Something needs to happen to where, you know, she looks strong in defeat and Asuka needs to retain the championship and move on. Or you could have it where she won and then we could have a unification match at WrestleMania where Charlotte wins the Rumble, uh, Ronda Rousey and Becky Lynch will fight together and then you have your triple threat to unify the women's championships. Since we're getting women's tag team championships, it's the perfect time to unify the women on both rosters and have them, you know, go on Raw and SmackDown. I think it'd be the best decision for the women's division, and I think they should do the th same thing with the tag teams, but that's a whole nother deal. But I think that Ronda Rousey should either most definitely cost Becky Lynch this matchup and then have Becky Lynch come back and win the Royal Rumble, enter, enter herself into the Royal Rumble somehow, taking somebody's place, beating somebody up. Or Asuka needs to lose the championship to Becky Lynch, which would make absolutely no sense. I don't see why you would put the championship on Asuka if you're just going to take it right back. So I think that the first option is going to happen. I think that Becky will end up being cost the matchup and then maybe she goes on to win the Rumble later in the night. There's a lot of scenarios here, guys. I'm very interested in this feud and this matchup, and it's going to be a great match nonetheless. So there's a lot of points and different storylines and wrinkles you could add to this, but I definitely see Ronda Rousey interfering in this matchup. Next, ladies and gentlemen, we have the WWE Championship match between the champion Daniel Bryan taking on AJ Styles in their rematch here. And I'm honestly not that interested in this matchup. I feel like we've seen it a hundred times. I know they're both amazing workers, two of the best in the world at what they do, but I'm just not that hyped for it. I think I'm much more interested in the Universal title match, I guess because it's so fresh and it's my boy Finn Balor, and I'm just very hyped for it. But I mean, I'm, I know this is going to be a solid matchup. I hope they give them some time, and I hope they can outdo what they did in their last match. And I'm excited for that aspect, but I don't know. I'm really confused on the WWE Championship picture going into WrestleMania. Who is going to be the champion? I think that AJ Styles, it's, it's really hard to call here, guys. I really do not know what they're going to do. Do they want Daniel Bryan as the champion? Like, what's a good matchup for him going into WrestleMania besides The Miz, who's tied up with Shane McMahon right now? It makes no sense. I don't know where they're going to draw storylines story from. I'm really confused on the WWE Championship picture right now when it comes to SmackDown Live and what they want to do and what their matches for WrestleMania. So without knowing who's going to win the Royal Rumble and, you know, AJ Styles and everything, if it were my, if it were my pick, I would pick AJ Styles to win this thing. But but he even said himself, he literally like talked to Vince McMahon. It was like talked amongst them that the reason he dropped the title to Daniel Bryan to begin with is that he didn't want to work the WWE champion schedule. He wanted a lighter schedule and he didn't want the pressure of being champion anymore. So why would he get the championship back right here? I'm going with Daniel Bryan just for that reason. But I think if it were me booking it, I think I'd have AJ get it back in time for Mania. But I guess we'll just have to see what happens. But I'm going with Daniel Bryan. Next up, guys, we have the match that I'm most looking forward to besides the men's rumble itself is Brock Lesnar 
taking on my boy Finn Balor for the Universal Championship. Guys, this matchup has been storied and retold and everything. We, we have been waiting on this one for forever. Ever since Finn got stripped of the title and Brock held it captive forever. You know, the memes and the everything, that the social media posts that Finn has posted about Brock and the championship and wanting this opportunity. I mean, I'm so hyped for it, guys. I, I, I can't even hold myself in. But one question is going to be, I know that the rumors are flying that he's not going to bring it, but is he going to bring the demon? Is Finn Balor going to summon the demon to fight Brock Lesnar? I'll tell you this right now, if Finn Balor summons the demon, then he has to win. That's just how I feel about it. I think that the demon needs to be hella protected. He hasn't lost but one time in his career, and that was back in NXT, and everybody's already forgotten about that. Nobody even, you know, recalls that when they bring up the Demon gimmick. You know, it only has one loss ever, and that was to Joe. Or maybe he has two losses. It doesn't matter. It was in NXT, and nobody really recalls it anymore. On the main roster, the, the Demon has been booked very strong and, you know, just killing kids and just taking names and adding them to a list. And I think that if he brings the Demon here, he's got to win, man. I just do not see the Demon losing. I do not want to see the Demon losing. I think Vince McMahon's in that same boat. He really wants to see the Demon protected, and I think that's why he's not going to bring the Demon. I don't think he's going to bring the Demon, even though he could, but I just don't see it happening. I think we're going to get regular Finn Balor, and for that reason, I think that Finn Balor is going to go down in defeat, but I hope he freaking looks great when he does it. I hope that Brock makes him look great. You know, Brock, when he wants a matchup and he wants to work with somebody, which he handpicked Finn Balor apparently for this matchup, then he he works. You know, when he picks Daniel Bryan, AJ Styles, when he fought them, he, he tore the house down with him, and I know that he could do the same thing here with Finn. It's going to be epic. I cannot wait for it. I'm going to be cheering my ass off for Finn Balor. And I'm going to literally be jumping up and down. If he wins, guys, I don't know what the hell I'm going to do. I would book it that he won and goes into WrestleMania. Have a Finn Balor versus whoever you want match. It'd be much better than Brock, guys. I just don't see any future investments in Brock Lesnar. I mean, he's been holding this title captive for two years, and it's just enough. We need a working champion and a fighting champion, and Finn Balor's the perfect man for that. They wanted it since the beginning when he got called up to the main roster and defeated Roman Reigns and won those Fatal 4-Ways and beat Seth Rollins and was the Universal Champion. We were on our way, man, but now this is the time. I can't wait for this matchup. Again, I'm going to be cheering my butt off, and it's going to be epic sauce. One thing that could happen is that Braun Strowman or somebody could cost Brock Lesnar the championship. Maybe Trash Corbin could tr cost him the championship. We could see someone help Finn Balor. That way, you know, he doesn't beat Brock Brock Lesnar per se by himself. He could have some outside help like Braun Strowman like I mentioned or somebody else. Or he could just beat him straight up and you could per like freaking strap a rocket to his back and shoot him to the moon as the Universal Champion. I don't know. All I'm saying is, is I'm going to be going hard for Finn Balor. I don't expect him to win, but I'm going to I'm just going to go out on a limb and say he wins. I'm going with an effort. Just just Finn Balor. Give him the Universal title. All right, guys, so starting out first with the Women's Royal Rumble. I know they did main event last year, and I don't think they should main event this year. There's no Ronda Rousey, and I think that, you know, I think that the Men's Royal Rumble should main event this year. You know, they could flip-flop. That would be fine with me. I just don't think they should main event this year. You know, last year it was the first ever. We had Ronda Rousey, and this year we don't have any of that. So why Why do they need to main event? We could just have the Men's main event this time, and everything will be fine. But besides that, before we get into the match, I want to run down who all the confirmed entrants are for the Women's Royal Rumble to this point. So we have Natalia, Bailey, Ember Moon, Lacey Evans, Alexa Bliss, Ruby Riot, Sarah Logan, Liv Morgan, Mickey James, Alicia Fox, Mandy Rose, Sonya Deville, Selena Vega, Charlotte Flair, Naomi, Tamina, Peyton Royce, Billy Kay, Dana Brooke, Lana, Nia Jax, Nikki Cross, and Carmella, who is confirmed for the number 30 spot. Now that is 23 spots total taken. That means that there are seven spots that could be surprise entrance, NXT call ups debuts, all that good jazz. I think that we're going to get some Legends return. You guys can see that we have Mickey James, we got Lita, we have Trish Stratus, we have the Bella Twins. I think that some of those are definitely going to show up in this matchup. I think that we're going to get a Kyrie Sane. We could get a Rhea Ripley in here. We could get a Bianca Belair in here. We could get a lot of different women in this matchup, and even Shayna Baszler could show up. Who knows, given NXT TakeOver and all that good jazz, we'll just have to see. But I think that we're definitely going to get some cool surprise entrance. This matchup was wasn't totally trash last year. I think that there was a lot of breaks. There wasn't a lot of active wrestling. It was usually just two women going at once. But for the most part, for the first Rumble, there was some botchiness and sloppiness, but that's expected with the first one. Hopefully this one is better, and I'm expecting some good things out of this. Honestly, this one's tough to call. I know that Carmella has the number 30 spot, and I think that that has an interesting aspect to it. Again, like I mentioned, I think that if Becky Lynch loses to Asuka early in the night, she could end up taking 
someone else's spot, beating up somebody like Carmella, taking her number 30 spot, winning the Rumble, and getting her championship rematch that way with Ronda, or the unification match like I mentioned before. But besides Becky Lynch winning, I guess the only logical answer would be Charlotte. I think it's going to be Charlotte or Becky Lynch. That's the literal only answers that I can give. If it's not one of those two, I literally have zero ideas. Maybe Ember Moon. I mean, I really have no idea. I mean, they could give it to Alexa Bliss, even though, you know, she's had her time. She's doing her little thing on Monday Night Raw. She really doesn't need to wrestle right now, so I don't, I don't know. We've had plenty of Alexa Bliss. I don't know what else that they could do with her, but Charlotte and Becky is the only thing that makes sense to me, guys, so that's who I'm going to go with. It's either going to be Charlotte Flair or Becky Lynch to win the Women's Royal Rumble here in year number two. Last year, Asuka did win, which I predicted, and that was the right winner, but she should have went on and beat Charlotte Flair at WrestleMania. That didn't happen. They totally squashed her after that. Her character went nowhere, and then she finally got her repercussions at TLC this year, and now she's champion, which she should have been a whole year ago, but that's besides the point. I'm going with Becky Lynch or Charlotte to pick up this victory, and you guys know how I feel about the surprise entrance. So for the main event, guys, we have the Men's Royal Rumble match, my favorite match of the year because of all the unpredictability, all the surprise entrance, all the good jazz I covered in the intro. I'm excited for this, guys. We have some epicness going into this matchup. And I'm going to list off all of the confirmed entries. Then I'm going to give you my thoughts on the matchup. I'm going to mention my surprise entrance that I think could show up. I'm going to mention my predicted winners and who I would like to win. So let's go ahead and run through the confirmed entrance for the 2019 Men's Royal Rumble. So of course we have John Cena, Dean Ambrose, Seth Rollins, Samoa Joe, Drew McIntyre, Kofi Kingston, Big E, Xavier Woods, Apollo Crews, Baron Corbin, Elias, Jinder Mahal, Jeff Hardy, Bobby Lashley, Andrade, Cien Almas, Rey Mysterio, Mustafa Ali, and R-Truth, who is confirmed for the number 30 spot. That is only 18 spots confirmed and 18 spots taken, so that means there are 12 spots open, but that does not mean there's going to be 12 surprise entrants. That means that there's going to be 12 guys who are not confirmed. Therefore, we could have Gold Dust, we could have Mojo Rawley, we could have Zack Ryder, Kurt Hawkins, Heath Slater, all those good guys. They could easily show up, you know, Titus O'Neil, all those guys. So, I mean, I, we know we're not going to get 12 surprise entrants. That's not how it works. We never do, and we expect that. We're going to get maybe three to five at the max surprise entrance in this year's Royal Rumble. Also, one thing to note is that John Cena apparently has an ankle injury. He will not be at the Rumble, so I do not know where that's going to go. I think it was supposed to be written into a Lars Sullivan storyline where he attacks John Cena and takes his place in the Royal Rumble. I don't know if John Cena is going to show up. I heard that he wasn't, but everything's up in the air. I was going to throw him in here just because he's a confirmed entrant. He could show up, but I think that it is a lock that he may be out. I'm not sure, guys. We'll have to see at the Royal Rumble itself. But anyways, moving forward here, I mean, there's literally only three ways this matchup is going to go, in my personal opinion. I think that Seth Rollins should win this. I think that, you know, the way it's been booked all year. Uh, before Finn Balor got put in the Universal Championship, I wanted Finn Balor to win the Royal Rumble. But now that he has a championship match, he can no longer be in the Royal Rumble because that should be a stipulation. Um, unless it's in their heel character or their storyline and they book it that way where they take somebody's place. Like, Roman Reigns two years ago when he, you know, just showed up as number 30 just because they wanted to troll the fans. That's absolutely unnecessary. He was in a championship match earlier that night, showed up at number 30. That's absolute bullcrap. It wasn't even a storyline. He just did it anyway. And that's unacceptable. So what I'm saying is that before Finn Balor got put in the Universal Championship match, I wanted him to win this thing, but since that's not going to happen, I think that Seth Rollins needs to win the Men's Royal Rumble. I've been saying it for a long time now. I thought that Seth Rollins would be the one to win it, go into Mania 35, dethrone Brock Lesnar, send him to UFC. We'd have the Beast Slayer, the King Slayer, Seth Rollins stepping up on the grandest stage, dethroning Brock, winning the Universal Championship for the first time, and going on a lengthy run and having a nice title ch championship run there and it would be all good in the world. But now I really don't know what to think because I really want Finn Balor to win the Universal Championship. I mean, we could ha we could see somebody that's not even on WWE right now win the Royal Rumble, and I'll get to that in a minute. But I'm honestly confused, guys. They're still saying The Rock could win this thing, but The Rock was supposed to win if Roman Reigns was going to be in the main event with the Universal Championship before he uh, you know, had to take a leave of absence. So I really do not think that The Rock's going to win here. Other names being thrown around is Drew McIntyre, Braun Strowman. Those two names are also mentioned with The Rock, Seth Rollins, 
and um, all of that. So there's a lot of things surrounding this Royal Rumble, but I think it's more of a, I think this is one of the more unpredictable Royal Rumbles that we've had in recent years. You know, we like everybody knew that Randy Orton was going to win. That sort of was a whim. I, I totally predicted it. Shinsuke Nakamura, same thing, totally predicted that. And if that were the case, then I think that Seth Rollins would be the given winner. And I think that is who I'm going to pick as my projected winner, is I think that Seth Rollins will win the 2019 Royal Rumble. And if I could pick who I want, to win, I would pick Seth Rollins. Since Finn Balor's not in this position, I want Seth Rollins to win, and I'm picking Seth Rollins to win. Whether Finn Balor or Brock Lesnar wins, it still works out. Maybe Seth Rollins could win and then say, screw that, I want AJ Styles. Can you imagine AJ Styles versus Seth Rollins for the WWE Championship? Now that's some ish I would like to see. If Finn Balor wins, maybe Seth could say, I don't want my championship rematch with Finn, I want AJ. And then you could have a fresh feud with Finn Balor and maybe a, a Kenny Omega or somebody that comes in to the company. But anyways, guys, I'm predicting Seth Rollins to win, but now I'm going to give you some guys that I think that will be surprise entrants in this year's Royal Rumble before we get out. Out of here. Alright guys, so here are some names that I think could be surprise entrants in this year's Royal Rumble. We have Batista, first of all. I think that if they want to book that Triple H match at WrestleMania, you know he is healing from that pectoral muscle injury, and I think that Batista could easily show up, eliminate some people, maybe Triple H cost him the match, eliminate him in the Royal Rumble, setting up setting up their Mania matchup. You know, we had the SmackDown Live 1,000 seats planted, and I think that would be a perfect little setup there. Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens are definitely going to be in this Royal Rumble, and I can't wait for the freaking music to hit and then men come out there. I think Kevin Owens is going to eliminate Bobby Lashley and the next night on Monday Night Raw, he is going to fight for the Intercontinental title and I think he's going to win. I think that it, it, Kevin Owens is going to become the Intercontinental Champion the next night after the Royal Rumble. You heard it here first, folks. Matt Hardy, I saw where he is cleared. He is in actually some of the best shape he's ever been in. He said he's lost a lot of weight and that he is cleared to wrestle. So I think that Matt Hardy is going to show up in this Royal Rumble. I think that, you know, we could see a few there set up. Maybe he returns to SmackDown Live or Monday Night Raw. I'm not sure. But but I think he will show up in this Rumble as well. Uh, two other guys, it's Adam Cole and Pete Dunne, some NXT talent, some UK talent. We got both of these guys. I think that Pete Dunne um, will be an epic surprise. I think that Adam Cole showed up last year, and I think he should show up again. Maybe other members of the Undisputed Era, who knows? But um, another talent that I think will show up is either Lars Sullivan or EC3. Uh, maybe Heavy Machinery. Uh, Ricochet is another name that could also be in it. But I think the one name that everyone is sort of, you know, hoping for and wanting is this man right here. And it is... Kenny Omega. I know that Nick Jackson posted something on his Instagram. He posted a DM where this guy said, you know, is Kenny coming to WWE? And Nick jokingly said, yeah, he told me to tell you that if you were to message me and ask me this question that I should tell you, he is going to uh, go against his contract and wrestle illegally for a different company. And I think that, you know, that is all jokes and that is all fun and stuff like that, but I would not put it past him to actually show up and do that. I think that, you know, they would totally do something like that. That is something something the Young Bucks would totally do, and I think that Kenny Omega, again, contracts are not bulletproof. He could totally show up if, you know, WWE wanted him to, if New Japan wanted to, they could totally, you know, give it some leeway, and uh, he could wrestle, guys. He could show up, and I hope he does. I hope he shows up at the Rumble. I hope he wins the and Rumble if Seth Rollins isn't going to win, but that pretty much does it for my surprise entrance, guys. I would love to know your thoughts on the Royal Rumble below. I'm so freaking hyped for it. Uh, I mean, it's getting closer and closer every single day, and it's a very exciting time. We got all kinds of stuff going down. This could go down as one of the best rumbles of all time if it's booked correctly. But that does it for all of my predictions, all of my surprise entrance, and everything, guys. Comment down, comment all of yours down below. Subscribe to the channel. Leave a like if you enjoyed the predictions video. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MyDamnToys, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.